I'm looking for Deb. Deb, you ready? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Mount Pleasant Public School Board of Education 2021 organizational meeting. Um, this is the meeting of the Mount Pleasant Public School Board of Education that is conducted in public, but is not a meeting of the public. There will be time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. However, the purpose of today's meeting is to act in, on specific items of a timely nature. And more specifically, um, by state law, we are required to have this board meeting, this specifically organizational meeting um, on this day every year. And we have very specific things that we have to go through during our organizational meeting for approvals and for the functioning of the school district. However, right after this, we will go into a regular board meeting, which will be more of the mode of what everyone is used to seeing and hearing. Um, and we will talk about regular business at that time. But everyone, please, as we do with all beginning of all board meetings, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So again, some of the strange differences that we have is actually at this time we have no officers of the board and we have new school board members of the board. Um, and so due, due to COVID and other issues, we actually have sworn in already Dana Calkins, Jessica Jergenen, and myself, Tim Odekirk. However, we are gonna do a ceremonial swearing in at this meeting um, to because we like to do it. So officially we are sworn in, um, but we are going to do a um, one for um, the good of the order and so everyone can see. Um, and I'll let Jen carry forward on this. Yes, thank you, Tim. Good evening, everyone. Um, to begin with our meeting this evening, we will do the constitutional oath of office. As Tim mentioned, it's already been officially done for all three of our new board members uh, with Deb Irvin, who is our notary. So that makes it legal and official and they've signed in already. Um, but to be able to do that in this setting, we felt was important as well. So um, I think we'll do everyone at once, if that's okay. And I'll have our board members raise their right hand and repeat after me. I, state your name. I, Jessica Jernigan. Do sign. I, Tim Odekirk. <laughs> Dana, you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if I really needed to be on. <laughs> you got it. I, Dana Calkins. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear, swear. That I will support. That I will support. support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of this state. And, and the, the Constitution, Constitution of this, of this state. state. And that I will faithfully discharge. And I will, and I will faithfully, faithfully discharge, discharge. The duties of the office. The duties, the duties of, of the office. Of member of the Board of Education. Of member of the Board of Education. Of Mount Pleasant Public Schools. Of Mount, of Mount Pleasant Public Schools. Schools. Isabella County, Michigan. Isabella Isabel County, County, Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According, according to, the to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is roll call. Again, we have no officer, so I am going to, I'm temporarily acting as officer for this component of it. Um, and so I'm going to do a roll call vote. Um, and everyone has to open up your mic to say that they're here. Amy Bond. Here. Dana Calkins. Here. Jessica Jernigan. Here. Sheila Murphy. Here. Tim Odekirk. Here. And Courtney Stegman. Here. Thank you much, everyone. If so you forgot why, hey, you forget Willene. Oh, Sheila Murphy. No. No, you didn't forget me. You forgot I Willene. forgot Willene Pangle. <laughs> here. Sorry, Willeen. That's okay. Um, now you threw me off my jive. <laughs> so um, the next thing that we have to do is um, uh, approval of the agenda. Again, today's approval of the agenda is, uh, is for this component of the board meeting is very specific. However, is there anything that any board member would like to add to the organizational meeting? 
Not seeing anything, the next item on the agenda is the appointment of the temporary chairperson. Actually, we appoint the superintendent every year at this time to actually manage the election of the officers um, to open that up for any board member to move forward. And so, um, is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second. Second. Got that down? Are there any further questions? I will do the roll call vote. Amy? Yes. Bond. Dana Calkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Timota Kirk? Yes. Willene Pangle? Yes. And Courtney Stegman? Yes. Motion is approved. So Jen is currently the temporary chairperson for this portion of the meeting. Yep. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Tim. So at this point, I will take nominations for the first officer position that we have uh, this evening, and that would be for the Office of President. I would like to nominate Amy Bond for President. I would suck at that. Are there any other nominations? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to roll call vote. Tim, do you want to do that vote or do you want me to do that? I'll do that. Okay. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkin. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. Wileen Pangle. Yes. And Courtney Stegman. Yes. Congratulations, Amy. You're the president. So we usually let Jen, go through the rest of the list, and then Amy will take over as chair at the end of that. Okay. So next, we will take nominations for vice president. I would like to uh, nominate Tim Odeker. Second. Can I express my interest in um, myself? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would somebody like to nominate Courtney? I'll nominate Courtney. Can we back up for just a second? Did someone second Tim's nomination? I had seconded Tim's. Okay, thank you, Amy. And so now we have Jessica's nomination of Courtney and now we need a second for that nomination. Can I second both? Is that allowed? Yeah. Okay, I'll second that one too. Okay. Are there any other nominations for the Office of Vice President? Okay, so we need to do a roll call vote. Tim, I guess I'm not sure. Do we have board members state the name of the candidate they're voting for? Is that how we? Move forward? Um, we can do it that way. Or do we go through yays and nays for candidates? Good question. What does the board like to do? I was wondering if we could hear from each of you, maybe that would give us just a second to think about it. And I don't, I don't know if that's oh, sure. something yeah. you, you do. Yeah, that's a great idea, Lee. Um, I'll start. Um, the, so, um, I'm willing to be vice president. One of the reasons is, is we had talked to over with Jen and Amy is to help with the transition from the president's role to the vice president to help support Amy and Jen with the experience that I've had with the COVID and everything else over the past year um, to keep some consistency on the way things are mid-year. Um, it is not my intent to stay vice president for next year, um, but I thought it was valid to stay as vice president to support um, Amy and Jen through this year of transition. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that kind of work, um, and I think it would be a nice component to be able to make that since I've been kind of in that, the presidential role for so long. Um, and I would like to hold that position. Um, I know I'm obviously a much less experienced than Tim, um, but I, I like the voice that I have um, for the folks who I have one for. Um, and I think that, you know, our community could, could handle a little bit of a change. Yeah. 
Thank you both. Uh, Deb, is there a preferred way that we need to vote on this? You were shaking your head earlier, so I want to make sure that. I initially thought that we should vote on each motion. I mean, we do need to vote on the motions. The they're individual they're nominations, they're not motions. Nominations, yeah. You all can handle it how you'd like to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't we do it by now? Since it is a nomination, why don't we just go down the, the list and each board member say who they would have, and then if there's a tie, then we can break that tie. Okay. Would you like me to do that, Tim? Sure. Amy Bond. Um, Tim. Dana Hawkins. Dana, you're on mute. Sorry. My bad. Tim Odekirk. Uh, Jessica Jernigan. Tim Odekirk. Sheila Murphy. Uh, Tim Odekirk. Willie Pangle. Um, Tim Odekirk. Tim Odekirk. Tim Odekirk. Courtney Stegman. Courtney Stegman. Okay. So Tim will take our position of vice president. We will move on to nominations for our position of secretary. I'd like to nominate Courtney for that. I'll second. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Okay, again, we'll do a roll call vote. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Hawkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Wileen Pangle? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. Thank you. And then finally, we have the position of treasurer. So I will take a nomination for a board member for the position of treasurer. Don't everyone nominate and jump at once. <laughs> Sheila, is that something you'd be willing to do? You're, You're on, on mute, mute, Sheila, but it, that seems like a yes. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's just a name only. Deb does all the work. <laughs> And I'd like to thank Ginger Sheila for that. I second. Thank you. Other nominations? And again, we'll do a roll call vote. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Hawkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Wileen Pangle? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. And Courtney Stegman. Yes. Thank you. So I will now turn the meeting over to our new president, Amy Bond. All right. Um, well, I was going to say, I very much appreciate this and I ask for some grace as well as we uh, kind of move ahead. Um, so am I correct in that our next, uh, what we're doing next is the, is the um, public comment? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Every board meeting that we have, we do have to have an element of public comment in it. So as Tim mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, we have this, our organizational meeting, and then we'll move into a second regular meeting that will also include public comment. Um, but if you're comfortable with that, Amy, I can help and assist with public comment as I've done in our previous meetings. Wonderful. So at this point, if there are any community members on our meeting this evening that would like to make public comment on any um, agenda or non-agenda item, you're welcome to do so. If you'd like to please raise your virtual hand, I will um, allow you to address the board.
And I'll give you one more minute if there's anyone that would like to make comment at this time. Not seeing any hands raised. Okay, so let's move ahead then. And um, we have the regular Board of Education or the set time, place, and postings for meetings. And so the regular Board of Education meeting. And I apologize, I was having lots of technical issues before. Um, if you want me to, Amy, I can walk through this really quickly. That would help. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be great. Yep, no, that's no problem at all. In your board packet this evening, you have a schedule for our regular meetings uh, for the 2021 calendar year. That is one of the um, sort of awkward pieces. Our board runs on a calendar year where our district runs on a fiscal year that is June, June 1st. Hmm. July 1st to June 30th. So it's a little bit of a mismatch there, but you should have a schedule there for proposed meetings through December of 2021. And then there is a resolution that we do need to approve this evening and I'll read it. Whereas an organizational meeting of the Board of Education of the district was held um, on the fourth day of January, 2021. Whereas the Mount Pleasant School Board feels it's important that regular meeting dates be scheduled well in advance when possible. Whereas the Mount Pleasant Schools Board of Education feel it is important to notify the public of its regular meeting dates, locations, and times of such meetings. And whereas it is appropriate to set the 2021 calendar for the Mount Pleasant School Boards of Education meetings at the organizational meeting. Therefore, be it resolved that the dates, locations, and times for the 2021 calendar year are established for the board for regular business meetings. Furthermore, the Mount Pleasant Public School Board of Education assigns a superintendent or his or her designee the duty of posting this information. I do think it's important to note so that the public is aware um, that we have received, um, that there's a new state law that was signed uh, just before the holidays that does allow us to continue meeting virtually through March 30th of 2021. So our plan will be to continue meeting in this virtual format as long as we are permitted to do so. I move to approve the resolution. Second. And I'm doing a roll call vote. Okay. Yes. What, Amy, are there any further questions? Sorry. Um, does anybody have any further questions? Okay. Not seeing any. I just want to clarify, is there a specific order that I need to go in? Okay. Okay. Tim not, I was just, I, I think we were doing alphabetical order. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do that when I can write that down. <laughs> but for now, I'm going to do it in the order you are on my screen. Okay. Tim Odekirk. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. William Pengle. Yes. Dana Calkins. Yes. And Amy Bond. Yes. And Courtney Stegman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amy, you're on you're mute. muted. Amy, you're on mute. Sorry, I will get That's the hang funny. of this, I promise. Um, the next section is the appointment to the subcommittees, is that correct? Okay. Um, how do we typically run through these? Um, in previous um, years, we've taken each position as it is. Our board members do have um, a general description of each uh, position. And um, uh, Deb and I have provided memos to you that specifically re have a recommendation for each position. So if you just want to go down the list, I can walk through the memos. Okay, wonderful. So first would be the vocational careers. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, and so the vocational careers appointment is the appointment of a board member that will work with the uh, Grace Isabella Technical Education Center on the construction um, and sale of a home. Um, if you recall, we did just sell the, um, the last home that we built back in June of this last year. And I believe we're looking to break ground uh, sometime this spring. So last year, John Mazurkovich held that position. So we're, uh, I'm recommending that the board appoint a representative to the Vocational Careers Incorporated board. Um, I, this is not a board that meets very often, um, but definitely a, a unique part of our district. How is it a one year or two year term? I believe it's a one year term. Is anybody interested in that one? I, I'm interested in that, yes. Great. Should we make a nomination? Yeah. I would like Sorry. to nominate Dana Calkins for the Vocational Careers uh, Board. I'll second. Anyone else? Okay, do we need to do a roll call vote then? Okay, Courtney, if you wanna do the roll call vote. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins. <laughs> yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. Great, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, the next is the Peacemaker Award. Yep, so every year the, our district hosts a peacemaking ceremony, which certainly this year because of COVID, we need to revise those plans. But we do have a Board of Education member that serves as representative on the Peacemaking Committee. Um, in the past, that person has also sort of emceed the event. That is optional, but that might be something that uh, you might want to do if you are in this role. Our board uh, last year appointed um, Amy Bond and her term is set to expire. This is a little different, expect to set to expire on January 31st, um, largely because it's a January event. So we don't wanna have someone coming in brand new at the beginning of January. So this person will be taking over February 1st. Anyone interested in that position? And I have to say that this was a very little commitment. Um, I know this has been kind of a, an odd year, um, but I know there's been a couple other people that have held this position. Um, and it, it is not one that meets often throughout the year, really your term kind of is in January. I'm fine with this. I'd like to nominate Courtney then. I'll second. Uh, roll call. Amy yep. Bond. Yes. Uh, Jessica Jernigan. Yes. William Pangle. This is out of order. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Dana Calkins. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Okay. Courtney's going to. All right, next is the Mount Pleasant Public School Sex Education Advisory Board member. Yep. By law, the state of Michigan says that if we're going to teach reproductive health in our schools, we have to have an advisory board that monitors what we teach. The composition of the board is very specific, um, where the state identifies certain kinds of community members that need to be a part of this committee. Linda does uh, co-chair the committee typically with one of our health educators um, from the district. So this is a committee that's comprised of teachers as well as community members. Um, it is a one-year appointment and our previous person that served in this role was Beth Sorensen Prince. Does anybody have any interest in this committee? I'm interested in this committee. I second. All right, roll call. Yep, Good. go ahead. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Calkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. 
Great. Okay, so the next is the anti-bullying task force. And again, by state law, we are required to have an anti-bullying task force that meets and implements anti-bullying programs uh, in our district. Of late, those programs have been largely addressed through our PBIS programs in our buildings. Brandon McQueen has most recently served in this capacity, so we're asking that you appoint someone for the 2021 calendar year to this role. Anyone interested in this, uh, this one? I do have interest in this as well. And I'd like to nominate Courtney Stegman. Second. Roll call, good. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Calkin? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. Okay, then that one passes. Um, next, we move on to the Professional Study Committee, or PSC. So as most of you know, the Mount Pleasant Public Schools has a long-standing tradition of our Professional Studies Committee, working with teachers and administrators, um, reviewing curriculum, making new curriculum purchases, our curriculum is on a, a multi-year review cycle and process. Um, several years ago, we created a position so that a board member could serve as an ex officio member of this group, um, joining uh, whenever they're able to do so. Um, previously, Courtney sat in this role, so we're asking that the board appoint someone for the 2021 school year, or 2021 calendar year. Since I was on that committee for eight years as an administrator, I would be interested in doing that. I'll second. Oh, I think we have to have, Sheila, can you make the nomination first? Oh, I'll nominate. Sorry. <laughs> Seconded. Okay. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Karkin? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. Okay, wonderful. And then next is the Student Reinstatement Committee, and this is where we need two individuals. Correct, per our board policy, when a student has reached or near the end of their suspension, long-term suspension or expulsion, they write a readmission statement and we ask that they meet with a small group of individuals. It is typically comprised of two board members, myself, building administrators from whatever building the student either attended or would be returning to, and then a teacher representative. So um, this past year, Sheila Murphy and Amy Bond served in this role, um, and we're asking for two board representatives to be in this position for 2021. I'd be willing to do this again. Okay, Sheila? As would I. Okay, Dana, so do we need to do those separate or can we put them both together? I think we could probably do one nomination and one second for both and then vote on them at once. Okay, so I'll nominate Sheila and Dana. Second. Okay, roll call. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Calkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Uh, Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so then we move on to the touchstone, and I know this is usually to break down who writes what month. Do we do that in, in this format as well? Typically, we just have someone say, I'll take this month, I'll take that month. It's not a formal situation where folks have to vote on it. You can see in Deb's memo, we're looking, we need a candidate for uh, February, April, and June of this year. Um, Amy, we've sort of already penciled you in for August and then November and February of 2022. So um, is there anyone that would be willing to, willing to write the Touchstone article for February of 2021? I think I owe it to Deb from 
my first year, so I can take it. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. Mm -hmm. How about April of 2021? I can I'll take that April. one. Oh, Jessica, go ahead. You, Jessica. I'll, I'll, I'll take June. Thanks, Tim. How about November? I can take November. Thank you, Weileen. How about February? I'll do it. Thank you, Dana. Of 22, right, Jennifer? Correct. Okay. So you have right around 13 months to get that together. Got it. I'll start tomorrow. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So next is the election coordinating committee designee. Mm -hmm. yep, and again, every year we just ask that you, the board appoint um, a designee from the school district to coordinate any election services or any school elections that happen for our district. Um, typically we appoint Deb Urban into this role and we're asking that you just make that appointment again for 2021. So moved. Second. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Cocken. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Great. Thanks again, Deb. All right. Next is the GI. RESD special, ed special Education Advisory Representative. And this is an advisory group that looks at all the special education services that are offered not only in our district, but across our region that includes Gresham and Isabella counties. Typically, our the person in our special education supervisor role and our assistant superintendent for human resources represent the district on this committee. So that would be Stephanie House and Linda Boyd. We're asking that you appoint those two representatives again this year. So moved. Second. Roll call. Um, Amy Bond. I'm sorry, I didn't get who moved. I Jessica did. Yep, yeah, Jessica. 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 And seconded by Sheila. Okay. Thank you. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Cocken. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then let's go to the Neola representative. So as you know, Neola is the service that provides our board policies. Um, and they uh, ask that we identify a, a district member to represent the district. Um, last several years, the superintendent has served in that role. So we're asking that you once again uh, appoint the superintendent to represent the district for Neola. So that would be me. So moved. Second, Sheila. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. Wonderful. All right, next is Cultural and Recreational Commission CRC representative. So the CRC is the organization that um, works with the Ice Arena and with Maury Courts. Um, and for several years now, Brittany Knopp has been the representative of our school district on this committee. So we're asking again that you uh, appoint Brittany to that position. It is important to note that this term is a little bit longer and it does go through December 31st of 2023. So moved. Second. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. Okay, wonderful, and, and thank you to the representatives. Um, next is the, um, the Mid-Michigan Aquatic Recreation Authority Committee. Mm -hmm. 
And this is a new appointment for us. Um, if you remember this fall, we approved the Articles of Incorporation for the Mid-Michigan Aquatic Recreational Authority. At that point, it was determined that the city of Mount Pleasant would have two representatives on the board, the Union Township would have two representatives on the board, and the Mount Pleasant Public Schools would have one representative on the board. Um, this is the culmination of work that started just over a year ago. Uh, Sheila Murphy was a part of the original committee. Um, and as we move forward to have the rec authority, we are recommending that you appoint Lisa Diaz to this role. Uh, many of you know Lisa, she's a person that has presented to our board several times um, and is a real advocate for the Aquatic Center, was a, one of the founding members, if you will, of the Swim Friends of, of Mid-Michigan. And I should so say she's willing to yeah. accept this role. I was going to say, so yeah. moved. That would be phenomenal. Second. Wonderful. Roll call vote. Amy Bond? Yes. Dana Cocken? Yes. Jessica Jernigan? Yes. Sheila Murphy? Yes. Tim Odekirk? Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. OK. Um, John, I do have one question. Usually we also have the um, community uh, representative, um, the one that you and I, or I'm usually, I, or I have been the ex uh, officiate for the community board. Yeah, the, the um, education. That I didn't see any. Yes. I believe my two year term for that was up as well. So. Okay. Okay, we can revisit that. Maybe that will be an appointment that we'll have to do at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All for right. That. No problem. Okay, next is the um, conducting of school business. Oh, we still have one more, the parent advisory committee. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I got that one. The GRESD parent advisory committee. And so this is a state mandated committee that is uh, made up of parents that represent students receiving special education services through Gratiot Isabella RESD. Um, and so we're recommending that we appoint our current representatives or Scott and Katrina Harrington uh, to represent the Mount Pleasant Public Schools on the Gratiot Isabella RESD Parent Advisory Committee. And that's a one year term. I would like to nominate the Harringtons. I'll second, Sheila. Okay, Courtney. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Cocken. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. Okay, wonderful. And I'd just like to thank everybody for, for stepping up and, and taking on those additional roles and then individuals in the community who are, are willing to be on, on boards um, as well. This is all a, a addition that is, is usually spent. Okay, so next moving on to the conducting of school business. You Can I interrupt, Amy? Oh. Um, on my list, there was one that we didn't do either, and maybe I just missed it. Is the district school improvement committee did i miss that one uh, no you did not you, you did not miss it the district school improvement program that process is going through a bit of a change right now so i don't know linda do you want to mention anything about my kip or is it still too um new of a uh, uh shift for us to know what kind of represented rep representation we need um we, it's definitely going through a huge change and there's a rather large um, organizational meeting coming up with Sarah Shriver. She has kind of been the leader in helping us catch up with all of that. Um, in the past, each building sent lots of representatives to some of these school improvement meetings and now it's definitely, um, my KIPP is a more district oriented approach. Um, so I think we'll know, I can tell you on my calendar when that big organizational meeting is and I think that will really guide there's a template, a chart of how um, how to move forward with our committee. 
and that is coming up the end of January. January 28th is a rather large organizational meeting about the new approach to school improvement in Michigan. So once we know more about that, there's a, you know, a, a document that we kind of fill in as a district as far as uh, recommended members. So we can- I want to have a better plan. sense of what's expected of us then we would begin to assemble our team. Is that right? Is that right? Mm-hmm, definitely. Thank you, Linda. Okay, um, so now moving on to the conducting of school business. Yep, so you have in your um, agenda this evening um, or in your packet a memo um, regarding the different ways that we're asking the board to authorize school personnel to conduct business on behalf of the district. So first is to administer all master agreements as ratified by the Board of Education to authorize the superintendent to enter into and execute all contracts and agreements. Um, any checks drawn on the general fund, debt retirement fund or capital project fund shall be authorized and are signed by the superintendent, chief financial officer or superintendent's designee. All checks over $30,000 must carry two signatures. Checks drawn on the general fund, special purposes account or food service accounts shall be authorized and signed by the CFO the superintendent of the superintendent designee. And again, all checks must over 30,000 must carry two signatures. All school district banking or investments shall be authorized and signed by the superintendent, the chief financial officer or designee. Purchase orders shall be authorized or signed by the chief financial officer, superintendent or designee. We recommend that the board approves the following, following depositories for school funds, TCF Bank, America Bank, PNC, Mercantile Bank, Isabella Bank, Isabella Community Credit Union, Michigan School District Liquid Asset Fund, Independent Bank, Northern Trust, Smith Barney, Standard Federal, Bank of New York, Michigan Class Pool, Bank of America, Fifth Third Bank, Central Michigan Community Federal Credit Union, and Huntington National Bank. The superintendent or chief financial officer shall authorize the deposit of school funds if it's in the best interest, it is a depository not listed, if it's in the best interest of the school district. It is also recommended that the Board of Education improve the annual retainer contracts with Troon Law Firm and Clark Hill. And finally, it's recommended that the Board of Education improve the continuation of the agreement with Yo and Yo as our auditing firm. We're asking that you take formal action on all these recommendations this evening. I don't know, Ginger, much of this is financial. If you have anything to add to the recommendation, that would be great. Nope, I think this just covers all of our basis. Anytime we sell our bonds or may need to borrow cash or anything, that's why all of the different banks are listed there. We don't right now use all of them. It just gives us um, that ability if they come in with the lowest rates when we need to do that. Um, everything else is pretty much business as usual. Okay, and we need to make a motion on that. Does anybody have any questions before? Okay. So moved. Great. I will second. Perfect. Okay, Courtney. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes, sorry. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. That passed. Next is the super authority, or superintendent authority to suspend expel policy number 5610. And in your board packet this evening, you have a memo from me regarding uh, MPPS board policy 5610. That is a policy that gives the superintendent the authority to suspend or expel a student. It does list the seven factors that must be considered legally prior to that happening. It also goes into um, the further um, offenses that could lead to a possible expulsion. Uh, based on this language, uh, we believe that the Mount Pleasant Public Schools Board of Education has a right to give the authority to the superintendent to act on such matters. So we're recommending that you do that this evening. And this is something that we do annually just to um, reinforce and, and reinstate that authority. Okay, is there any questions? 
Okay, would anybody like to make a motion? So no moved. moved. Oh, Dana got it, I'll second it. All right, Courtney? Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Cocken. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pangle. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, next is the Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe creation of ex officio board representation. And so this is a topic that we have discussed very recently with our board. I believe even all of our new board members are, are aware of this uh, discussion. Back in November, uh, Melissa Isaac, who is the Director of Education for the Tribe, did a presentation for our board. At that point, we discussed what it might look like to have an ex officio member representing the Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe join our board. Um, after that time, I did reach out to uh, uh, tri the Tribal Council through, through Frank Clotier, who is the Director of Public Relations. Frank has in since said that they are very interested and are very grateful for this continued collaboration. What we're asking this evening is that you uh, approve the creation of this position. I then will go back to the Tribal Council and ask them to appoint someone into this role. So we're not appointing a specific person this evening. We're just asking for your appro approval to create the position. So moved with enthusiasm. Yeah, second, second with enthusiasm. Yeah. Was there any questions? Oh. Okay. All right, Courtney. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel? Yes. Courtney Stegman? Yes. Thank you. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, next is the Board of Education norm review and signatures. So this is a process we started uh, several years ago where we had our board review a set of norms so that we can continue to move forward and conduct our business and our meetings in a respectful manner. Um, I think the last seven or eight months have shown us that we can all respectfully disagree, be open-minded, see different folks' viewpoints, and be able to move forward in a collaborative manner. So um, I would just ask, um, I know you all have had this information for, for a while. If there's any questions, anything that you feel like we need to tweak or change, um, if the norms are okay as is, we would ask that either you stop into the office and Deb will have a copy so you can sign it here or you can sign it and, and scan it back to us, whatever is the easiest way to get it back. Okay, is there any questions about that? Okay, so my, I guess my question then that goes along with this is now we transition into our regular meeting. Yep. Um, so I do, do we need to, we actually oh, need, we actually need to adjourn this meeting, okay. reopen the next meeting, start over, roll call, pledge of allegiance, all that all over again. Okay. All right. So, um, is there any questions from anyone about any of that? Okay. Not hearing any. Then, so can we adjourn this meeting? Then that is okay. So we'll set up to adjourn this meeting and then immediately start the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, do we need to, um, you said do the, the call of order. So again, this is the meeting of Mount Pleasant Public Schools Board of Education. It's a meeting conducted in the public, but not a meeting of the public. There is a time for public participation during the meeting is indicated in the agenda. The purpose of today's meeting is to conduct regular business that requires action by the board. These items may include those discussed at previous meetings or presented to the board for discussion this evening. And then call to order that that is that part of it. Um, so please turn off your and silence your cell phones at this time and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and now we need to do the approval of the agenda. Roll call, roll call. actually. Oh, roll call. Sorry. Um, Courtney, roll call. Amy Bond. Here. Dana Karkin. Here. Jessica Jernigan. Here. Sheila Murphy. Here. Tim Odekirk. Here. Willie Pengel. Here. Courtney Stegman. Here. Great. Okay, now we can move on to the approval of the agenda. Sorry. <laughs> I move that we approve the agenda. I second. Okay. All right, second. Um, and do we need to do anything other than then approve it and then start with the roll call? Nope. Oh, okay, so let's do roll call. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Carkins. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Okay. And then we, so that passed. The next is on the consent items is the approval of the minutes for the December 14th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second, Sheila. Okay, roll call. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman. Yes. Okay. Next is the new business, secondary business and technology task force recommendation and approval. Yes, at our last board meeting, we had uh, Darby Weaver present the PSC task force for the uh, recommendation for secondary business and technology. And to summarize the recommendations that we'd like the board to approve, we have a name change in the Mount Pleasant High School course offering guide from integrated tech to business technology, approval of a new pacing guide and those adjustments made by the um, teachers in those committees for grades 6 through 12, adding computer science as an elective course offering for middle school, Mount Pleasant Middle School, eighth graders, um, and all for the cost of um, no budget requests, thank goodness. So, do you have any questions? Okay, with no questions, um, we'd, would anybody like to make a motion? So move, Sheila. Second, Tim. Okay, roll call, Courtney. Amy Bond. Yes. Dana Calkins. Yes. Jessica Jernigan. Yes. Sheila Murphy. Yes. Tim Odekirk. Yes. William Pengel. Yes. Courtney Stegman, yes. That's passed unanimously. That's great. Um, and then next, the report and updates, uh, starting with the school board recognition month. Yeah, so I just wanted to take a moment um, to formally recognize and thank all of our board members. January is school board appreciation month and we wanted to make sure that you all know um, how appreciated you are. Uh, we know that this is a stressful job, especially during these stressful times. And so uh, for all of you, I do have, I will hold up in front of my camera, a certificate of appreciation from the Michigan Association of School Boards, and we'll make sure that we get that to you. Um, for our community members that are watching today, um, I, I think that you all are aware, but just to be sure that this is a very glamorous job for our community members that are volunteering uh, to be in this position and, and are spending quite a bit of their time and uh, their own personal resources to be a part of our district and to support our schools and to support our community. So we are 
incredibly grateful. Um, and, and we, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you sticking with us during all times, but especially during times when are a little bit more stressful. So thank you very much. And we look forward to recognizing you uh, throughout the month of January. Thank you. Um, Next and on, under the report section is information on return to school. So I am going to share my screen. Um, and hopefully I should be able to pull this up pretty quickly. So it's important first to, to realize that tonight is not our typical monthly presentation that we've been providing you with uh, return to school information and uh, the reconfirmation report information. That happens um, once a month, which we just did that at our December 14th board meeting. And so we'll plan on doing that again at our next board meeting on uh, January 18th. The reason why return to school is even on our agenda this evening, because we wanna be able to be prepared and make sure that our families are prepared for the upcoming week. So um, I know that you all have read the correspondence that I sent out yesterday to our staff and to our families to give you an idea of where we are with COVID related situations in our district. And so along that line, I just wanna go back a little bit to remember where we were and how we got to where we are today. So back in November, um, we, so we started the school year providing options of virtual and face-to-face -face instruction for our families. Back in November, we had to change the direction of our programming based on a rapid increase in COVID cases in our school community and in our community at large. And I'm gonna revisit those numbers here in just a minute. At that time, our major concerns included the number of um, Mount Pleasant Public School staff members and students that had to be in quarantine due to close contacts, especially staff members. We had several buildings that were hit um, especially hard. And so therefore they, I was worried about our ability to maintain and continue to function in those buildings at that time. Uh, there was a significant jump in positive cases throughout our community. Um, today, the spread of COVID is still a concern and will continue to be a concern, but our num numbers are much smaller now. Current information, consistent information from the Central Michigan District Health Department remains that their advice is for us is to keep our youngest students in school as soon as possible. They want you, our school districts to move to virtual instruction if COVID becomes disruptive to your daily operations. That's where I was back on November 15th when I had to make that decision that we had to immediately move to virtual because we could not continue our daily operations based on our number at that time. Since then, there was a prediction of a spike after Thanksgiving and after the recent holidays. We, in our community and in our state, we've not experienced that spike that was anticipated. Our local numbers continue to show a plateau and even a decrease. And most recently, the Central Michigan District Health Department has told us that they believe that K-12 students are safe in schools and typically COVID is not spread in schools. That's coming from the health department. So if you look at our current COVID numbers, we go back to November 16th. At that time, we had eight active student cases. We had 113 students in quarantine. That's out of right around 3,500. We had seven active staff cases, and we had 47 staff members in quarantine, and that's out of about 450. On December 14th, so a little bit less than a month ago when we gave our last back to school update, we had seven active student cases, 26 students in quarantine. Of course, our students had been virtual for about a month at that point, so they hadn't been together. We had eight active staff cases and 18 staff members in quarantine. Today, which we've spent a lot of time today gathering information and making sure we have the most up-to-date and accurate information. I have to give a lot of credit to our COVID team, especially Tammy Carrier and Heather Prewell. They have worked relentlessly to make sure they have all the accurate information we need. We have one active student case. We have 22 students in quarantine. We have one active staff case and we have no staff members in quarantine. On uh, December 18th, 
The epidemic order from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services was extended. That order was extended through January 15th, and I'm sure that you all are very familiar with this as it's impacted all of our lives. Um, the biggest change for our school district is that effective immediately high schools were, were able to open for face-to-face -face instruction. There was a continued delay for athletic events, uh, practices and competitions, and they're still trying to figure out how to finish the fall season and begin the winter season. And the epidemic order also provided additional information regarding key metrics, social pods, and social distancing. So the advice continues to be the same. Wash your hands frequently, wear a mask, stay six feet apart, and limit those that you're uh, in close contact with. Moving forward, we believe that starting January 1st, our DK-12 students can safely return face-to-face -face with our COVID protocols in place. What does that mean for our district? It means that as always, all DK through 12th grade families have the option of staying virtual through the Oilers Online program. And many families have already chosen that option. If students are choosing to return face-to-face, -face, students and families, I should say, this is what it would look like. From DK through fifth grade, they would be face-to-face -face five days a week. Sixth through eighth grade, students would be face-to-face -face using the cohort model where they're in person for all core instruction. All electives are virtual. Dismissal is at 11.57. Students take their lunches home with them. And Wednesdays are virtual all day for all students. Ninth through 12th grade, including the Grace Isabella Technical Education Center, would return face-to-face -face using a hybrid model. That's the blue team and the gold team, as we used previously, where they have alternate days of attendance, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday. Wednesday are virtual for all students. We believe that these models were successfully implemented for 11 weeks at the start of the school year, and we feel like it's time to be able to return to that program. And we believe that we have the ability to keep our students safe in school. And I just want to remind you of the general information and what we're using when we say that. We're looking at safety of our staff, safety of our students being a top priority. We have solid COVID protocols in place where masks are required in all classrooms at all times for all grade levels, everywhere in the building. Classrooms are disinfected every four hours or after a class transition. Buildings are deep cleaned on a regular basis. You know that we've increased our custodial staff so that they're able to use the electrostatic um, disinfectant machine so that they're continuously cleaning. Our bus protocols remain the same, where we're also using the electrostatic machines on our buses. Our students are sanitizing their hands as they get on the bus, and they're wearing masks the entire time they're on the bus. We know that our supports for at-risk and special education students are stronger in a face-to-face -face instruction environment. And we know that our face-to-face -face students are in smaller class sizes than they typically would be, even with the return of Oilers Online students. Our families have been great partners in this endeavor where they're screening their students before they leave for school. We've provided the refrigerator reminder so it's very clear what they're screening for and what they need to do. And we believe that these instructional models are working based on our experience. So I'm gonna stop my screen share now so that we can have a discussion. Um, if you remember back in uh, November when we made the decision to move to virtual, the plan was at that point to return to face-to-face -face instruction on January 11th, um, if the numbers prove so, right? We've talked a lot about looking at cases and looking at uh, the numbers and making decisions based on science, um, which is what I've shown you this evening. I will continue to very closely monitor every case, every situation that we have, um, but we believe it's time, time to return to school. Um, I did receive information just about 20 minutes before this meeting started that the Central Michigan Health Department is ready to begin planning for phase 1B of providing vaccines. That would include providing vaccines to our staff. Uh, so I will be gathering information from our staff regarding those staff members that are interested in receiving the vaccine. I wanna be clear because I know this has been a question. At this point, we're not mandating that anyone receive the vaccine, but I want to be able to tell the health department, this is how many of our staff members are interested in moving forward with this process. 
when I, we've sent out the survey to staff, if they say they're interested and they change their mind, that's fine as well. But our health department needs to have numbers so that they can begin to plan for phase 1B of the vaccine distribution. My understanding is that they expect to start to approach that phase 1B uh, towards the end of next week or the beginning of the week of the 18th. So we wanna make sure that they know what our requests are for the vaccine. So um, again, I feel as though I continue to work closely with our community partners, with Central Michigan District Health Department. Our staff members are closely following protocols. Our students are closely following protocols. And I believe it's time for our students to return to the classroom. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. We do also have, I should say, other administrators that are on the call if you had a specific question about a building um, that I, I could have them answer as well. So the current status that we're looking at is to kind of reactivate where we were prior to November and implement all the programming structures as it was at that time, correct? That's right. I will say too, you, you know, I, I think you all know from, from going through that process with me, we, as we learned of cases and, and as we learned of, of staff and students that needed to be quarantined, you know, in a lot of ways for us, that was reassurance that having so many different programs, although it may seem a little overwhelming to someone from the outside, it really worked, right? We really were able to limit the number of students that did come in close contact because of our small class sizes, because cohorts were so rigid at the middle school. So my proposal is that we continue with that, those models, knowing that if it, if it becomes too much, I'm gonna be the first one that's gonna say we can't do it anymore because that's exactly what I did in November. I do have a question. I know we left standing um, back in November, the Wednesday virtual for K through fifth. And um, my memory of it was that there would be some negotiation with the union and you let us know. Do we know, I, I've seen what you just showed us had the Wednesday virtual for the middle school and the high school. Do we know where we stand for K through fifth? Yes. So at that point, when we were looking at this in November, we had asked to look at one day per month to be virtual on a Wednesday. So the upcoming dates, if we were to do this for K-5, that could potentially be virtual would be January 20th and February 10th. But before that's set in stone, I need to be able to go back and revisit that whole conversation with our elementary administrators. But you are correct when we said we would do Wednesday virtuals for middle school and high school, we agreed to one day a month, one Wednesday per month for virtual for, for our DK through five students. So I'm not ready to say these are the for sure dates yet, but I, I have the list of dates right here on my desk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And notification would happen the same way that it has been this whole time for, for families in any active cases. Yes. Yes. So that, I mean, I, I'm open to any suggestions if you feel as though I should do anything differently, but um, I'm trying to send correspondence to families every two to three days. Everything's posted on our website. Um, I was trying to do the letters every day, but then I think that sort of becomes white noise. Uh, so I'm waiting, you know, to, to make it a little bit more, uh, but um, I'm definitely very clear. These are the positive cases. These are the buildings. These are probable positive. We're differentiating between the two. Um, so that will certainly continue. Um, our, our COVID team is a well-trained, well-oiled machine. Uh, they know exactly what to do. And if we, just for anybody watching that might be curious, um, if we needed to, we could do in the past where um, if one building had a case that led to another case, we could shut that building down potentially individually compared to the rest of the district. Right, so the, the, the um, best example of that would be what happened with Fancher Elementary, where really that was numbers of students and staff that just became uh, a really sort of alarming in one weekend, and then they were virtual for a week before the rest of the district reached that point. Uh, so yes, we would make a case-by-case -case decision um, and I would also consult with Dr. Morris from the health department every step of the way. Thank you. 
And then you mentioned the vaccine for the staff. And I, so if I understand correctly, you said that we can start planning, right? So who, according to how many folks would like to receive it, um, we'd have a, a list. And then the idea was that maybe by February, ish is that what we expecting ish right so, so I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have, have a date. timeline right. so just just this afternoon the health department sent out an email saying hey schools we have this survey on our website which i had already found this afternoon and completed it for us this afternoon because i thought i want to be first in line um and basically they said that they're interested in us helping them by compiling a list of employees that might be interested in getting the survey. So there is not a definite timeline in the information I received today. But remember, I do have a weekly meeting with the health department. So I'll meet with them Thursday afternoon and maybe we'll have a better sense. But, but I agree with you. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more end of January, beginning of February-ish uh, before we're able to actually receive the vaccine. And the, the reason I'm asking is I, I've, I get the strong feeling that our community in general would like us to reopen the face-to-face, -face, but our teachers and, um, and staff are, you know, um, more reluctant. Um, and, you know, so that, that would give us about a month, right, of face-to-face -face with teachers less protected than if they are, um, or less safe, I should say, than if they're teaching virtually. Yeah, I mean, I, like we were in the fall. Yeah. I mean, where, where our teachers were safe, um, to the best of my knowledge, there was not one case of COVID that was transmitted in our schools. I, you know, it's hard to say because it is community spread. So you yeah. don't know for sure where you've gotten it, but we could never directly link one case to another in our schools. Are there any other questions about that? Okay, Jen, should we continue on with the NEOLA policies then? I, I believe so, unless, unless the board feels as though there's anything different that we need to do. I believe we can carry on and I will continue to keep you posted every step of the way. And then you'll know that we will have another return to school update that will require a formal vote along with reconfirmation information plus benchmark testing data at the uh, January 18th meeting. Okay. So then the next item under the report and updates is uh, the NEOLA policies and I will turn that over to Linda and maybe Ginger. <laughs> Yeah, so as you know, Neola guides us. We have a Neola representative who kind of, um, we go through, through things line by line and kind of interpret what has changed. And uh, this, the, the two policies that we have before us today are completely based on federal law. So policy 6114, cost principles, spending federal reserve funds. It's a revised policy. They are all federal law updates and um, we were basically told that we just had to accept this as written by our NEOLA representative. And policy 6325, procurement, federal grants and funds, again, all based on federal law updates about small purchasing methods and um, a few changes to the competitive bid threshold. So if you have any questions, Ginger might be able to chime in as well, but um, there weren't, there wasn't much wiggle room in the adoption of these policies to help us protect our district. Okay, do you need anything from us tonight regarding that? Is it written as a first reading? Yes, it's a first reading. So we can um, we can approve that next time. And if you have any questions in between, as usual, you can always let, let me know and I can have Ginger help me with more cliff notes. <laughs> <laughs> Was there any questions about that tonight? Okay. All right, next is the citizens request to address the board on any agenda or non agenda item. Jen, if you're able to help navigate that if anyone has questions. For sure. So for any community members that are um, on the meeting this evening. If you would like to make comment to the board, please feel free to raise your hand and I will um, enable your microphone so that you're able to talk.
So I see a couple of hands up, but I cannot. Alexia, did you have your hand up? I sure did, and you okay. just unmuted me, figured it out. <laughs> yeah, you can go over it, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Whew. All right, good evening. My name is Alexia Torres, and I am a high school English teacher. This is my 11th year teaching, and I have equal experience at the middle and high school. I want to extend a continued congratulations to Tim, late welcome to Willene, and a new welcome to Dana and Jessica. I truly believe that you three newbies will breathe some new life and most importantly, new perspective into our board in order to ensure all voices are heard. While I am sad to see Brandon go, I hope you heed his advice and determine a new name for our alternative ed program and building as those of us who have grown up in Mount Pleasant know that the current way program is absolutely nothing like the old Oasis. As someone with a master's in curriculum and design with a focus on trauma and resiliency in the classroom setting, it has been disheartening to listen to the way presentations with not one mention of social emotional learning or relationship building. These at-risk students are the ones who need our guidance most. And I ask that you make them a priority moving forward. Because we have been virtual for some time now, we teachers have our protocols and procedures in place. Most students have become film familiar with the daily routine. And honestly, I have had much better success with students all online than those in the hybrid model of which I advocated for before. I believe this is because all students and staff are currently learning and teaching the same way using the same platform. We have been lucky that our students and staff who have had COVID have eventually gotten well. Personally, my family has not been so lucky, and I know of many Mount Pleasant Public Schools employees and students who have lost family members due to COVID-19. It is quite possible that many of us are asymptomatic and continue to spread this virus to our loved ones. Is it not a logical thought that our current numbers of infection and those in quarantine are lower because we have all been safely at home? Therefore, I ask the board to make the tough but smart choice to make a motion to commit grades six through 12 to virtual learning for the rest of this trimester. This way we can all focus on being successful in one platform. Some special circumstances will always apply, but those can be made by appointment. When Jen and the board continuously push the in-person return back by a week or so, we teachers have to replan. The back and forth will, will not help students and teachers determine our classroom protocols. So how do we know if we're being effective educators, counselors, and staff members? Survey the students, they will tell you. To my knowledge, Mount Pleasant High School was the only building who sought student opinion with a survey. And to my knowledge, those surveys results have not been examined. To me, this seems strange, and I hope that we start to seek out and listen to our youth voices. Earlier this fall, staff were surveyed and if I do remember correctly, about half of us said we didn't feel safe to return to face-to-face -face instruction. This summer, several community members asked if you were willing to take a chance of losing a staff member or another student, or a student, excuse me. The fact that you're considering sending us back to school next week shows us that you are. Please stop gambling with our lives. Do the right thing by keeping us home and safe until we have all had a vaccine. This may mean making the hard, hard choice of staying virtual for even third trimester. Thank you for your time and feel free to reach out to me regarding this statement. Thank you, Alexia. Melissa, did you raise your hand? Yes, I did. Okay, we can hear you, go ahead. Ani Wabzi Koy and Dijnakas, Nami Dodem, Saginaw Chippewa Keen and Donjaba. Hello, my Anishinaabe name is Swan Woman. My English name is Melissa Isaac. I'm Sturgeon Clan and I'm a citizen of the Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe of Michigan. And I sound really breathy because I'm pretty um, emotional, and you're gonna you're gonna hear why. <laughs> um, so Buju Mount Pleasant Public School Board of Education. 
administration and staff and congratulations to um, Jessica Jernigan, Dana Calkins, and Tim Odekirk on your first official meeting as recently elected board members. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the virtual attendees listening and watching tonight, the beautiful people who comprise our diverse and wonderful community. Um, for those of you that don't know me and those of you that do, you're going to hear, hear this spiel again. Um, I'm a product of Mount Pleasant Public Schools, a product of Michigan Community College, and a continuing product of Central Michigan University. Having acquired my bachelor's, master's, and now my educational doctorate in educational leadership. Uh, fire up and shout out to cohort 25. And so all of that is just a fancy way of saying that I'm a townie. <laughs> uh, many of you know that I'm an educator and educational advocate to my core. I am a student, always learning. I am a mother, my children's first teacher. I'm a former classroom teacher. Teachers, you are forever my heroes. And I'm currently an administrator. Administrators, our jobs have never been more challenging. What I know about all of us, students, parents, teachers, administrators, and everybody involved in the educational system is that we are all doing our absolute best we can given our individual and current circumstances. I raised my family here in Mount Pleasant. I have four school-aged children who will attend both tribal school and Mount Pleasant Public Schools. And there are many families like mine. The Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe citizens and Mount Pleasant's residents live, work, and play together every single day. I applaud the Mount Pleasant Public Schools leadership, superintendent um, Jennifer Verliger, and president at the time, Tim Odekirk, and all of the Mount Pleasant Public Schools Board of Education for creating a meaningful space at the table to bring much needed representation and visibility for Anishinaabek learners. That's the part that makes me emotional. I am thankful for the tribe for entering into this important space. This is a historical moment and I am proud to be able to witness this legacy. And I say legacy since this does not end with us, it continues for the ones coming after us. I hope and I'm excited for systemic change, engaging in difficult yet meaningful conversations for our children and our grandchildren and all of the ones coming after them. Miigwech to you all. Thank you, Melissa. Corey, did you have your hand raised? Yes, I'm. I'm just a parent of um, a third grader, and we've been doing okay with the virtual. And I am wanting to send her back face to face as much as anyone else. Um, I was just wondering if or why the hybrid isn't available for K through five only because this transition i mean this is going to be not only is it rough when they go back from summer vacation this is going to be i mean 10 times more intense for them transitioning back five days a week and they're just they're so little and now they're going back and having to wear going from wearing no mask all day being virtual to wearing a mask all day on the bus in the class and I know that the CDC says that it's okay for the younger kids to go back but at the same time I'm almost feeling like they're just like um, lab rats or something or maybe like you guys are just waiting to see what the numbers are going to be after putting the little ones in school five days a week so if hybrid is an option i really think that we should kind of look into that more and be more persistent about that that's all thank you corey is there anyone else that would like to talk anyone else that would like to address the board if so, please raise your hand, your virtual hand.
So I can see that someone has their hand raised, but for whatever reason, I can't see who it is. Jen, it says Abby Lewandowski. Okay. Abby, are you there? Yes, I am. Go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to, one, say thank you for uh, creating that board position to open up uh, commu more communication with the tribe. I think that is a really important step in merging our communities into one more cohesive community. Um, I also wanted to echo the sentiments uh, stated by Alexia Torres. I'm not going to go into any more detail that she did because I think that her statement was perfectly worded. Um, I am a staff member at Mount Pleasant High School and I I agree with Alexia wholeheartedly. I think that for consistency's sake that we should really consider keeping it the way it is for the remainder of the trimester because transitions are really hard for all these kids and just just from teaching for a, a short time i can tell that when these kids are going back and forth back and forth it just it kills it kills them it really does academically they don't know what to do and i just think for consistency and to give these kids and families just a little bit of not normalcy but just knowing what to expect uh, going through at least through March would just be really beneficial to them so that they don't worry about oh well I might be going back to school so I might not know what to do or all just there's so many things that are different between virtual and in-person learning so I just wanted to echo that as well. Thank you Abby. Eric, are you there? Hi, yes, I am. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing very well. Hope everybody had a great and relaxing break and welcome to the new board members. Um, just wanted to pipe up and say thanks again for everyone's hard work over the last, what, 15 weeks to keep things moving along in a, in a great pace. But I kind of wanted to spitball off the last comment and say that um, uh, I, I wrote a letter back in December to the board before I knew, before we had shut down for this past uh, three weeks to kind of address that sometimes we often overlook our special ed, ADA, special needs students when we're talking about the, the whole of the student body and that we often don't take into consideration that it can take 14 to 16 days for some of our uh, students in that group to readjust to the school schedule um, and that the constant bouncing in and out and in and out is very very detrimental to them as it is to the entire student body but um, it's twice as hard when we're you know having to fight a child well I, that's a the wrong term, having to encourage a child to come into the classroom or get on and off the bus or to, you know, engage in um, the classroom setting after they've been out for so long. So uh, whichever way the wind blows, I just hope it's a consistent choice for everyone and that we take all of these things into consideration, whether the student is what we consider general population or in one of our MOSI or MySci programs. So. Thank you to everyone on the board and to all of our admins for, for, you know, keeping the faith and keeping it, keeping it going. So thanks. Thank you, Eric. Heather, are you there? Hi, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. So I just kind of wanted to, um, maybe piggyback off of the last couple comments on the fact of going back and forth and how it's hard to change routine. And while I agree with that, um, the children being in a virtual learning environment, I feel is more detrimental to them than being back and forth in the unknown. Um, I have talked several times on these and made my opinion very well known that I feel they should be back um, face to face. 
I have a ninth grader and a seventh grader and my husband and I work full time. Um, we come home, we have hired a tutor. We still come home and spend hours at night going over homework because it's hard to expect a 12 and a 14 year old to sit home for eight hours a day and do work with no one there to guide them. While the teachers are doing a great job of putting uploads and all of that, that's not the issue. They, at that age, especially my seventh grade or sixth grader, he needs structure. He needs someone there when he needs to ask a question. He needs someone there to make sure he's not diddling on his phone, make sure he's not doodling or whatever. He needs to be in person, as do many of the other students. Um, I've said it before, unless you're staying home, you are going to be exposed. Unless you are going nowhere, you are going to be exposed. I work in healthcare. I work every day with people who have been exposed. The doctor I work for right now has been exposed and is off for 10 days. We haven't even gotten our vaccine yet. It's not going away. It's something that we're gonna deal with for a very long time. And I feel that our kids and everyone need to learn ways to keep themselves safe while still being able to carry on some part of a normal life. We're still doing sports. We're still doing other things. Like Jennifer said, there were no cases that could be traced back to being spread in our schools. You're more likely to get it at the grocery store or someplace else. The kids can handle wearing masks. They can handle washing hands. We need to give them a chance and let them see that they can do it and let, let them learn how they're supposed to learn. Thank you, Heather. Okay, at this point, I don't see any other hands raised. Is there any other community member that would like to make comment to the board this evening? Okay. Hi, Kelly, are you there? I am, can you hear me? Yeah, we can, go ahead. Okay. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate all the time and effort, and I feel like everybody puts a lot of thought into it. Nobody's jumping to decisions. People are listening. People are really like trying to think of what's best for all, and that's really hard because there's not an easy answer. Snow day, no stay. You're going to make somebody unhappy either way. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that you guys have options for families. Me as a single working mom, and my son learning best in the classroom, I appreciate the fact that he can go face to face, but I know he has friends that are doing great at home and they can choose to do that. So I appreciate that it's not a forced decision where all have to do this or all have to do that, unless it's necessary, like with what we did over um, break and stuff. But um, I just wanted to say thank you because I appreciate having an option and not being forced to do one way or another and saying all kids this and all kids that. And clearly we know that not all kids learn the same way. So if your kid learns better virtually or it's working for them and you guys can do it, then that's amazing. And if you can't and your kid needs to be in school, I appreciate the option of having that. So that was all I wanted to say. Thank you, Kelly. Is there any other member of the community that's with us this evening that would like to make comment? Seeing none, Amy, I will turn it back over to you. Okay. That leads us into then the Board of Education discussion. Is there any board members who have anything that they'd like to discuss um, or talk about at this time? I just wanna say that Amy and Courtney, you did great this evening, well done. Thank you. It's a big learning curve. <laughs> I appreciate everybody for sticking with us that uh, 
as we kind of muddled our way through. So thank you for that. All right, is there anything else that any board member has to say or any discussion? All right, um, not seeing anything. Um, at this point, am I able to call the adjournment of the meeting? Okay, then I will say that the meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a wonderful week.